Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to February's Comfort Book Club discussion of The Nun Such by Georgette Hare, the fabulous Regency romance. As always, my mum Donna is joining. Hello. And thank you so much to all of you who sent in voice messages, which I'm looking forward to including in this discussion video. It was lovely as always to hear from readers from all around the world who sent in their thoughts about the book. I'm really looking forward to getting on with the discussion, but first of all, I do want to share a little announcement. We obviously had last week off from filming and I was really hoping that that would be a productive week for me that would help me to get ahead and manage the large amount of filming that I do do a bit better. And life just really got in the way of that. I ended up having a totally exhausting... It was an exhausting week. Yeah, an it exhausting was. and stressful week. And I got really behind on work I do other than filming. Um, but the whole thing actually taught me a lesson. And that's that I really can't handle two vlogs a week. And rather than compromising on the quality of my videos, I've decided to go back to one weekend vlog a week plus the extra comfort book club video on Thursdays so I will be sharing a vlog every Sunday although not this Sunday because I really am so behind <laughs> I, I have not been able to film at all and I need more time to get yeah. a vlog together so I'll be sharing a vlog next Sunday and whenever I can I will share an extra Thursday video but it will no longer be a regular thing though I will always do the comfort book club as an extra video on the last Thursday of every month but let's get on with the none such discussion so this was such a fun choice for us we both oh, love Georgette Hare. We do, we do. Yeah. And you first introduced me to her with The Nunsuch. I wasn't sure which was the first one I read, but you think you definitely, no, definitely. gave me The Nunsuch yes, first. Yes, I did. Yes, yeah. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to choose this one for our comfort book Little club. Little did I know the Yorkshire <laughs> setting was going to well, be important. Well, I know, exactly. And that was another reason yes. why we wanted to pick this one is most of Georgette Hare's books really centre on London or Bath. Yeah. Uh, they're a bit more yeah. about yeah. cities. But some of hers are more rural, and this has to be one of the most rural of her I books. I think so, I think and so. And I love that it's set in Yorkshire and mentions Harrogate and Leeds, which are places that we know and theirs, yes, yes, not too far from us, so... It was really fun to return it to this. It really was. Um, knowing so much more about Yorkshire. Yes, and I thought that actually it wasn't much worse taking the um, the coach from Leeds to London than sometimes the faff of getting the different trains to get there in time too. <laughs> yeah, I know, exactly. <laughs> Um, but one of our readers actually sent in a voice message about how much she appreciated the Yorkshire setting too, uh, being a Yorkshire girl herself. So let's hear from Marie. Hello Miranda, Donna and Comfort Book Club members. This is Marie and I would like to contribute to the discussion of this month's book club choice, The Nonsuch by Georgette Heyer. Although currently living in the Canadian province of Prince Edward Island, home of Anne of Green Gables, I still consider myself a Yorkshire girl, so I was delighted to discover that this book is set around Harrogate, where I used to live. This was my introduction to the works of Georgette Heyer, and I felt that her style and plot were similar to the, my favourite Jane Austen novel, Pride and Prejudice. Particular phrases caught my attention, such as when Sir Waldo admires Miss Trent's fine eyes, Tiffany being described as a most accomplished flirt, and Mrs Underhill's indiscretion in discussing Sir Waldo and Miss Trent's waltz and, by implication, his courtship of her. I had to remind myself that far from being a Georgian novel, this was actually written in the 1960s. Overall, I enjoyed reading this book and I would like to thank you both for choosing it as your book of the month. 
Oh, thank you, Marie. Yeah, thank you so much, Marie. And all the way from PEI, that's yes, lovely. Yeah, so lovely. And uh, when Marie sent me her voice message, she, she also included a couple of pictures of a, of a very snowy Prince Edward <laughs> Island and, and the yeah. original Green Gables, which was really lovely yeah. to see. Something we've always wanted to see. Oh, I know. Yeah. I, I'd yeah. love to go there someday. Yeah. But... Um, Yes, back to Yorkshire. I, as we said, we really enjoyed the setting of yes. the book as well. Yes. And it felt more Austin-esque, didn't it? Definitely. The Definitely. small country village. A few families in a small country village. It was, it, it, it's amazing. You felt that with this one. So, and more so than in some of her others, I think. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. And some of the rivalry that comes up, like mm -hmm. between Mrs. Underhill and the squire's wife. And yes, she calls yes. her Mrs. B. <laughs> um, yes. that reminds me of the sort of rivalry between Mrs. Bennet and yes. the Lucases. Exactly, you know? <laughs> exactly. Um, so there were definitely quite a few nods to Pride and Prejudice. We felt those as well. Yeah. And also having the older heroine of Ancilla made me think of Anne Elliot Absolutely. A bit and and the governess role made me think really of Jane Fairfax too. Yes, so, exactly. Um and maybe even a bit of a look ahead to to Jane Eyre, I don't know. But yes. there was some of that, wasn't there? That yes, really... there was. Well it's yeah. interesting that this is a governess book as it well. Is. It um, is. I'm always interested in reading books about governesses yeah. and and Scylla is in quite a unique position in yes, this household in that she's given quite a lot of respect and intimacy in the family and circle. And money, as she points out to Scylla. That's so right, that yes. £150, <laughs> yes, you know. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, but her situation is still very limited. Yes, absolutely. Even within that world. Yes, and she's at the prey of the gossips. This is the thing. It's yes. only her... Her uncle, you know, the or great uncle, I can't remember what it is, but yeah, that he actually uncle. protects her by his, you know, position reputation. and his reputation. Yes, yeah, yeah, in society. Yeah. Yes, that is mm. um, very true. And yes, all of the gossips um, remind me of Austen novels yes, too. Yes. And the frightful Tiffany is a bit of a Lydia <laughs> Bennett. If Lydia Bennett were a paragon of beauty. <laughs> and incredibly wealthy. Yes, yes. yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, there are really two nuns such as in the book, in a way. There are. There's Sir Waldo, yeah. of course. Yes. And Tiffany is herself a nun and such. Exactly. In terms of beauty. her beauty. Yes, yes. Um, and really, also, I think, in terms of how frightful <laughs> she is. <laughs> She's so funny. I mean, the whole thing is so yes. funny. I think this is the thing that we really enjoy, too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And what is quite a common feature in Georgette Hare's books is that there often is a sort of parallel romance between two sort of older protagonists and then two younger protagonists. And you see that in this yes, book as well. Yes. And I find them both very satisfying. They are, they're very satisfying. Lord Lindeth and, and Patience is a very satisfactory yeah. yes. one too. Yes, I agree. Yes, right. yes. And Sir Waldo and, and Scylla are yeah. a wonderful pairing, I think, too. And they're shown in the book to have education, educating the, la the young, sort of in common. Yeah. They're both um, educators, in fact. Yes. Him through his roles as an un as a cousin, actually. Yes. And also, of course, and a guardian. With him, guardian, yes. and also with the, his um, interest in the orphan boys and yes, setting and up these. educating. Yeah. Um, disadvantaged children like that yeah. and Ancilla is of course an educator as her role as a governess but this idea of education this theme of education really runs through the book and I love how it links to of its romantic interests yeah. and they're both shown to be very thoughtful of their position as well very much yeah. um, although they're both not above using a bit of trickery <laughs> no. to control their charges. That's a <laughs> line about she perjured her soul and said it by saying, oh yes, you know, every time you boast, it makes you look less beautiful. Yes. <laughs> I love that bit of the book. And Tiffany's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
such a green one. Yeah, that's one of my favourite. That's one of my favourite lines. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but reading Georgette Hare, as quite a few readers pointed out as well, is an education in itself when it comes to Regency language and Absolutely. slang in particular. Mm. And that's such an important part of Georgette Hare's books is the way that they're written, the incredible language and the use of slang from that period. It's just peppered with so many fabulous phrases mm. and it sends you right back to that time and one of our readers, Laura, sent in a message saying she was transported back to Regency England from the very first line. So let's hear it from Laura. Hello Miranda, hello Donna. This is Laura from Italy. I adore the Nonsuch, a perfect choice for February, the month of love. I must confess that it was my first George at Hare's book and it was quite a surprise. Apart from the story and the characters, which are absolutely charming, what struck me most was the language. I'm not an English native speaker, so probably it was even more evident to me. But I really had the sensation of being transported back to the Regency period just reading the first lines. It was a continuous discovery of unusual words and phrases which made the reading of this book so pleasant at many different levels. One of the phrases I truly adore was to make a cake of oneself, used by the squire at the end of chapter two, and I have already included it in my vocabulary. Oh, thank you, Laura. Thank you, Laura. <laughs> oh, that's fabulous. I don't know if, uh, if um, non-native English, like English speakers probably think it is more um, obvious to them how it's this change in, in vocabulary. But I think for English no, speakers, I think, yeah, it's just even the same, for, Laura. For native yeah, English yeah, speakers, yeah. it's absolutely the same. You yeah. don't hear those expressions no. in everyday use for sure anymore. And there are Very lots enriching. of terms that have just uh, yeah. have gone out of use so yeah. we wouldn't know them either uh, but yes like you said it's very enriching yeah. it really immerses you in that world uh, which is so fun and Jason also sent in a message about how much he loved the use of language in particular in the novel and he made an interesting link to one of our former comfort book club authors so let's hear from Jason Hello, this is Jason from New Zealand. Aside from the charming story, what I loved about the Nunsuch is Georgette Hare's writing, her attention to capturing Regency language and slangs. Examples of the expressions I loved were nicking the nick, going against the pluck, talking slum, getting things done to a cow's thumb, being ready to sport one's canvas, to spout the pearls, to squeak beef, and referring to someone as a ninny hammer and a gull catcher. Miranda and Donna, I wonder if you have a favorite expression from the story. My favorite turn of phrase was when Hare described Waldo as being in a brown study, which means that the person's mood is agreeable, but not chirping merry either. The language was exhilarating and drew me in to share in the characters' personalities. Anyway, just like how P.G. Woodhouse is a linguistic genius when it comes to comedic writing, Georgette Hare is a linguistic genius when it comes to Regency romance writing. Thank you for the wonderful book recommendation. Oh, thank you, Jason. Thank you, Jason. And that's so true about P.G. Woodhouse having a similar vein to... Yes, um, definitely. Yeah. And the, they both use language so mm. well. And I don't know if I have any, a favourite expression. There are just so many. I know. I, I, I love that making a cake of, of oneself. Yes. I, I love that. And one. I think um, at some point someone says, oh, you talk such myth math. <laughs> Instead of yes. you talk such nonsense. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I really like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so there are just so many, though, that are just so fun. So, yes, we really appreciate the use of language about the books, too. And, yes, so agree with that yeah. similarity to P.G. Woodhouse. Such Woodhouse's. tight plotters, really, the pair of yes, them, Yes, and think. both use humour. I think yes. the such is one of the less funny yes. hair books. I yes. mean, there's lots of comedy yeah. in it still, but some of hers just have you laughing out loud all the time. Absolutely. And she's like Woodhouse in that way, too, in that they've 
both wonderful writers and use the slang of the time so well. Um, yeah. But they also wrote really tight plots yeah. and had a lot of humour um, to the books too. And that's an interesting comparison as well because I think P.G. Woodhouse often wrote to a certain formula. There were yes. certain types of characters yes. that came up over and over again. Mm -hmm. There were certain plot twists yeah. and features to his book. Like there's almost always, you know, a... a a uh, sort of dressing up like parties in <laughs> yes, a masked yes. like <laughs> event or something, or something yes, yes, you know yes, that yes. that's often used in his books and Georgia Hare is similar in that way too there are certain types of characters certain types of plot devices that are repeated in her novels so you have that feeling of familiarity yes. when you read the books and she herself, I think, spoke or wrote about having really two types of heroes. She did, of Mark yes. one and Mark two. two. Yes. Like that. Yes. She yes. basically just wrote her heroes <laughs> yes. to being one or other of those. And one is the sort of um, much nicer so, hero, yes. I think. Mark two, you know, I think very, that was, yes, was yes, that Mark two. I think so, and yes. Mark one is the this more, is like, maybe very... Uh, ironist type. Yes, 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 yes. Lots of sex appeal, yeah, but, yeah. Um, you Dark know... And Dangerous. Dark and dangerous. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Yes. Yeah, and definitely Sir Waldo is of the Mark II, you, sort of much yes. more respectable yes, and yeah. uh, calm, but you know, really sort of uh, lovely Helpful. hero. Helpful, <laughs> yes, 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 gentlemanly. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and I think though that even though her characters can be a bit two-dimensional in that way. Um, that you still enjoy them. Very much, very much. And one of our readers, Christina, sent in a message about how much she liked the characters and also that they all learnt to appreciate one another for not just their looks, but what was actually going on underneath. I mean, I love that at the start of the book, almost everyone kind of wants to marry Tiffany. Yes, and yes, And by the yes. end, like, absolutely <laughs> no one does. Horrified at the yes, thought of it. Yes. <laughs> um, so let's hear from Christina. Hi, everyone. This is Christina from Somerville, Massachusetts. I like that the characters in The Nun Such, with the notable exception of Tiffany, are esteemed and admired more for their kindness towards others than for their physical beauty. Sir Waldo is described as having a splendid physique, but it's his thoughtful nature that draws us to him. He's attentive to the stammering Cambridge student, he gently questions Ancilla about her life story, and he swoops in to help when the shopping trip to Leeds suddenly turns serious. That said, my favorite parts of the book are Tiffany's hilarious antics and how others manage them, like when Ancilla convinces her not to attend a dance because her dress will clash with the curtains and chairs. What a fun Valentine's Day read. Oh, thank you, Christina. Thank you. And you're so right. And I think Georgette Hare did so much research. You can see in some of her scrapbooks that she knew what the dresses would look like, what sort of colours would be used. And she researched everything. She was an incredible researcher. Oh, yes, she was. Yeah. I think that does really come out mm. in the books, doesn't mm. it? How meticulously she yeah. researched. And actually, I read um, this interesting book, The Game of Hearts, mm. The Live and Loves of Regency Women by Felicity Day just before reading The Nun Such again and this is about the real lives of women who were part of those upper society, you know, the very top uh, sort of echelons of society in Regency London in particular at that time. And it was so interesting to read this and to realise how much Georgette Hare got right yes, um, yes. about the time. And that men were often way more likely or way more able just through being able to travel more and being exposed to a much larger proportion of society, they were much more able to maybe marry a bit below their social standing yes. of that time. And you see that with Sir Waldo and with Julian. In the yes. end, they're, they're not too concerned about no. having to kind of marry their equals. Yes, yes. Quote, not so to buy speak. countess, so to speak. No, yes. exactly. Yes. Though Ancilla, of course, is um, shown to have 
higher ranking relations and you know some of that snobbish, snobbism does come out in Georgette Hare's books but what is interesting is that that was quite an accurate reflection of the time men were able to choose more freely but for women their reputation was everything and so very important and so Tiffany's exploits they're really humorous but they would actually have been a complete disaster yes. for a young woman of that time yes. to, <laughs> yes. if it had been really become known that she acted without so much you know without propri propriety um so i really enjoyed reading you this love book, that actually. in fact it was yeah, a real page turner you said it was yeah. i so yeah. i so recommend it the game of hearts by felicity day if you love regency romance mm. then this essentially takes a look at the types of people that are really being written about in books like bridgerton and the georgette hare and shows how much is real of how their lives are portrayed and how much is fiction and it was just such an engaging read so i really recommend it and then Victoria made another interesting point about the characters in this book and how much they're often misled by outer appearances, which reminded me again a bit of Pride and Prejudice. Yes, absolutely. And, uh, you know, Elizabeth's initial yes. sort of dislike of Darcy and yes. his of her. Yeah. <laughs> and... Um, and yes, I thought that that was really interesting. And of course, it adds to some of the real humour in this book too, yeah. especially the misunderstanding between um, Ancilla and Sir Waldo. Oh, of the orphanage. <laughs> yes. That was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it really yes. was. So let's hear from Victoria. Hi, Miranda. It's Victoria in California. From the opening scene of this book, I was sure that the dashing Nunsuch and the independent Miss Trent were destined for each other. I breathed a sigh of relief when the misunderstanding over the orphanage was resolved. How often characters were misled by appearances. For instance, the Nunsuch is so handsome that Miss Trent doesn't realize he's all so kind and sincere. Then Tiffany's beauty blinds Julian to the fact that she's selfish and self-centered. The nonsuch was definitely too good to be true, but this is the comfort book club, so we don't want to know if he has a dark side. Thank you for introducing me to this Regency romance. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you, Victoria. Thank you, Victoria. <laughs> yes, I think Sir Waldo as a hero Mark II does not have a dark no, side I don't think so. in the world of <laughs> Georgette Hare. No. Uh, but yes, I think it was very satisfying when he and Ancilla finally come together. And another reader, Maria, also sort of enjoyed these interactions between the characters. So let's hear Maria's message. Hello Miranda, Donna, and readers of the Comfort Book Club. It's Mireia from Belgium. I love the novel and the slow pace of the everyday country life. What has stuck with me the most is how Heyer kept me wondering about Waldo's intentions using the conversations between the characters and Ancilla. We are led to assume that Mrs. Andershill's advice cannot be trusted, while Mrs. Charlie is portrayed as a more grounded character who would give more sound advice. I really enjoyed that back and forth. Thank you for this great read and introducing me to hear. Oh, thank you, Maria. Thank you, Maria. And yes, I yeah. enjoyed those exchanges between <laughs> all the characters too. And I'm so glad you enjoyed this introduction to Georgette yeah. Hare. I think it's so lovely that we've been able to introduce a few people to Hare. Absolutely. Um, obviously, yeah. she's been a favourite of ours for a while, but quite a few readers sent us messages saying that this really was their introduction to mm. her. And one of those readers was Belinda. So let's hear her message. Hello, Miranda and Donna. Um, my name is Belinda and I'm from Minnesota in the USA. And I just finished reading The non -shut such and loved it. Um, what a great book. I had never read any of Georgette Hayer, so I am so happy um, to be introduced to her. Um, I'm totally hooked. I just finished reading Arabella. Um, thank you both so much for this 
this book club. I'm really loving it. Um, yes, thank you so much. Bye bye. Oh, thank you, Belinda. Yes, thank you, Belinda. How <laughs> lovely that we introduced you to Georgia Hare and you've gone on. Yes, yes I love Arabella too. Me too. That's yes. such a good one. Yes. And I think yeah, the good news for everyone who is new to Georgia Hare is that she was a very prolific writer. She was. She um, was. I mean she really she wrote for money, didn't yes, she? Definitely. She yes, she supported had to support her family and yes, yeah. yeah. Exactly. But um she also was passionate about her subject, I think yes. you can tell, and like we've said already, very meticulous over her research. Yes. And of course she wrote mysteries as well, I the love Golden the mysteries. Age Mysteries. Yes, yes, yes. And another of our readers, Gina, sent in a message saying that although she'd been familiar with Hare's mysteries, this was the first time reading one of her Regency romances. So let's hear what Gina thought of it. Good afternoon, Miranda, Donna, and fellow Comfort Book Club readers. This is Gina calling in from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in the States. I absolutely adored February's pick, The Nun Such. And while I was familiar with George Ed Hare's mystery novels, this was my first time dipping my toes into the waters of the Regency romance genre, and I absolutely enjoyed it. I thought that the dialogue was very sparkling, very witty, very Georgette Hare, actually. And I just loved the fact that the book was a giant vocabulary lesson. Thank you so much for recommending this book, and I'm looking forward to reading more Georgette Hare Regency romances in the future. Take care. Goodbye. Oh, thank you, Gina. Thank you, Gina. And I'm so glad that you really enjoyed The Nun Such and yeah. are inspired to read more Georgette Hare Regency romances. Yes, unlike Jane Austen, she's not been um, really televised. It was a terrible film of The Reluctant Widow, which... Yes, which she really hated. Yes, yes. yes. Um, no, she hasn't, which no. does seem to be a real shame, yeah. especially when you think how influential her mm, books absolutely. have been. Um, I think she really was the mother of the Regency romance mm. genre and yeah. so many series like Bridgerton and so on owe yeah. a lot to her and um, she really inspired so many writers um, with to go on and write more about um, this genre. So I think that her legacy certainly does live on. It definitely um, does. Which yes. is lovely. But for our final message, I thought I would share Sylvia's thoughts. She was a reader who returned to The Nun Such Like Us. It was a reread for her. And it was lovely to hear from someone else who likes the sort of comforting familiarity of Georgette Hare's world. So let's hear from Sylvia. Hello, Miranda and Donna, and to all the members of the Comfort Book Club. I am Sylvia from Italy. Georges Ter is a favorite of mine, like Jane Austen. The non such was a rare reading for me, in English this time around. Such a pleasure, so witty and funny. I was totally amused by Tiffany's tantrum, but I loved the clever way Miss Trent employed her vanity to make her behave. Etiquette and social manner were a sort of shelter for one's peace of mind. Of course, they can nothing against the charm of Sir Waldo, and even the sensible and proper Ancilla must fall in love with him. Thank you so much for this channel, an oasis of coziness in our hectic lives. Oh, thank you oh, so, thank much, you so Sylvia. much, Sylvia. <laughs> that was so interesting. She'd read it first in Italian, and this reread mm. was in English. Yes. Yes, I, I'd love to hear more about the different experience yes. in reading the book, um, if, if how the slang is translated, yeah. if it really is at all. I, I would be very curious to hear more about that. Uh, but anyway, I so enjoyed today's it was fabulous. discussion. It was a lovely, a lovely book for us to go back to yes, again. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, a fun romance for yes. February, as others have said, which, yeah, I really enjoyed this month. And of course, um, 
you do already know the March book club choice, but I will remind everyone of it. That is The Wind in the Willows yes. by Kenneth Graham. Another huge favourite. Another huge favourite. Yeah. So really excited for this one yeah. with the start of spring as well for yeah. us. I'm really looking forward to that. And then um, I'm also announcing April's book choice yeah. for the first time, and that is Sense and Sensibility by Jane Austen. Another favourite Jane Austen novel of mine, yeah. um, another real comfort read for both of yes. us. Yes. And somehow I always want to read this one in the springtime. Me too. <laughs> Me I don't too. know why, but no. it is a lovely book, of course. So really looking forward to April's discussion as well. But remember, you can always check out the Comfort Book Club uh, website, the sort of page about it on my blog, which is always linked in the video description box if you want to keep up or remind yourself of the upcoming books. Do you always remember to look there because that is updated. But I really enjoyed today's discussion. Thank you so much for all of you who sent in a voice message and yes a thank you to everyone for watching and for reading along with us this month i hope you have a wonderful re weekend coming up and although i won't be seeing you this sunday i will see you again next sunday yes goodbye bye bye